This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, tradition. And Solderwell, bringing innovative brazing products to the HVAC industry with training and support like no one else. What's going on guys? Hope you're all having a great week. Today I am bored and I am going to pimp my torch kit. If you're feeling like a pimp, I've done a couple repairs the last few weeks and realized how annoying and sick and tired I am of the traditional brazing caddy and the pathetic excuse of a storage space it contains in the front of it. Somehow all it ends up being full of is little scrap pieces of copper that cut the shit out of my hand. Even a god king can bleed. Three quarter inch bits of Silphos and usually a broken inspection mirror. So I decided I'm gonna go through my garage, find some things that I can use to maybe make a new setup and add some storage to it that makes it more convenient and more easy to access. But enough talk, let's do work. So it's a big goal here. This is quite a bit of stuff, more than can certainly fit in the small cubby in the front of a traditional uh, brazing caddy. I'll show you really quick what I plan to use to store all this and stash it on the outsides. So I'm going to use things that I already had around the house. Uh, these happen to be from my time in the Marine Corps. We've got an assortment of just kind of old tactical pouches magazine holders and I think these are going to work out perfect for the things I laid out a few minutes ago. Now as far as mounting these to the actual caddy it's actually pretty simple and worked out way better than I thought it would. Here's our typical caddy here mine's a uniweld and the magazine pouches will be just strapped to the handle here. No special modification required it's got the long snap straps that will feed right through the hole here and snap this securely on the back flush with this back area. As far as the larger pouch I showed, I went ahead and I just zip screwed some one hole strap into the side of the caddy. And we'll do the same thing, feed those straps through and snap at the bottom. Let's see how the fit into the caddy and how everything loads out into it. Okay, so for the large pouch, which again has these straps here that will snap after they're fed through the one hole strap, I'm gonna put all my tubing cutters into this. And that only took about the bottom third of that, so I'll go ahead and I'll throw in my hot block as well. The magazine holders are going to carry all of the long or skinny tools, and this way they'll be in an upright position, easy to access, and I won't have to dig through that front cubby. We'll go ahead and we'll use our small crescent, our service wrench, our reamer, our torch heads, and our inspection mirrors. And there you have it. And what we're left with now is all of our big ticket items, which will actually fit in the caddy itself outside the pouches. Let's go ahead and run outside so that we have a better field of angle on the caddy itself while I load the rest of this thing out, show you how I'm gonna do it. Let's head outside. All right, you can see I put my pouches on the side as well as on the back. So we've got access to our tools, keeping them organized. Let's get the rest of the stuff in here. I'm doing my tank change outs, I keep my crescent right there. Same thing with the channel locks. So I just kind of wedge them down right there. My striker I always keep right here in between the tanks. Also not gonna fall out. I'll put my grit paper right in the cubby. I put a big tie wrap around it. And what that does is it keeps it from unspooling and I can rip off a section at a time and it still keeps it bundled together. So uh, basically I'll tear this off right here and then it's still cinched. And then when I need more, I'll just pop it out here and then this will flip and give me this much more length to use. And I just do that throughout the whole roll and then, and then I just tighten it a little bit as I use more and more. So it always stays bundled, doesn't bust on me, always ready to use. For my Silphos, I did break out a hole down here and that's where I keep my silk boss now and that way it's not it's not sticking out above the handle where it's gonna get snagged on everything it fits down here nicely now I did always use the three quarter inch PVC little holder that you make with a little threaded adapter keep all your silver dry and easy to get to um, however with solder weld Silphos here they make this nice threaded middle part so 
from here, I can simply twist, get what I need, and then I'm good to go. I'll keep the Silfos 56% flux coated rod that's already pre-made in these Uniwell torch kits. And those fit all the way down below the acetylene tank level. My little acetylene knob, my extra flints, I'll toss in the cubby. Because now I don't have to worry about finding them through a thousand different things. My smaller tie wraps will also go in the cubby. And if you fold them in there like that, they kind of spring to the top. So they're actually not even in the way of me digging around. And then I'll take my larger ones and feed them into the same hole as the 56%. Now, why do I keep the tie wraps different sizes? Well, I use that a lot of times when I'm brazing things like compressors and you have a discharge line or a suction line that just wants to keep popping out on you. You'd be amazed how useful a couple zip ties can be put together as long as you need it to cinch your pipe to a certain area, keep it snug while you braze. As you can see right here, I'm doing a Daikin compressor and the discharge line 90 up and over. So I was actually able to feed tie wraps through the little eyelet hole at the top of the compressor and that discharge line and keep it tight while I brazed it. I almost got really nuts and put some more one hole strap and actually put a canteen on the side. That way I always had water available if I did have rags that I also kept with me for any other situation. But I think it's a little bit overkill and at that point we're actually making the kit too bulky and wide. So, but you, as you can see, there's just a lot of possibilities here with this concept. Um, I know a lot of you guys may not even have this stuff at your house, but it's just to kind of give you an idea of what you can do as far as taking advantage of the outside space of this caddy. That's kind of the setup that I'm gonna be trying for the rest of the summer here. We'll see how it works out. Again, I'm just kind of playing around with some ideas. I'm always one to try to consolidate as much as I can, even if it makes it a little bit heavier, if I don't have to make multiple trips across a roof, through a facility, you know, all the way back to my van, then I'm gonna take it. Again, those little pouches, that's just something I already had on hand. You could spend a lot of money on those kinds of pouches, especially if they're new. And frankly, if you're gonna drop the money on them, you're probably not gonna be using them to throw on a torch kit. That said, you could probably find really similar pouches at local army surplus stores stuff like that it's funny when we're talking about the military and reminding me about when I was in the Marine Corps kind of takes me back even back then and when I was younger I always loved filming and trying to shoot cool videos today is March 27th 2007 going to Iraq in a few minutes a lot of families here everyone's saying bye I had no idea what I was doing frankly I still don't But I really wish I had a platform like YouTube, you know, 10, 12 years ago. I think I would have had a blast. What's up, guys? Welcome to my crib. See here? Nice little three-story mansion I'm holding down. Right. Pack it down like 360 rooms, three bathrooms. Can't beat it. Come on, man. Let's take it So anyways, guys, let me know down in the comments below what did you think of this setup? What did I miss? What would have been another good addition to it or something you would have taken out of it? And with that, guys, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.